Well, okay, Sinatapi. Ni student ni Doniko Makoyo Sakoyi. I'm coming to you from the the Sixicatepe, the Blackfoot Confederacy territory that goes from Saskatchewan to Yellowstone. And so I just saw would <laughs> are we okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm at my niece and nephew's house, um, Mariah Gladstone, and there's some construction workers that want to um, take a picture with me, eh? <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> all the construction workers, I'm carrying this sign because it says reservation dogs, Priscilla. And um, so if you see me, let's take a photo because we want to elevate reservation dogs we want to elevate um, the season two, season three, season four, season five, season six, season seven. Sheesh, this this might be um, the show that catapults us into um, getting rid of racism. <laughs> getting rid of sexism, getting rid of... Um, a minimum wage for um, uh, people of color and only um, the lighter ones can excel. I swear. Anyway, I just uh, so welcome to Native Wellness Institute's um, Power Hour. We are, oh my God, we're going into 123 weeks. And so, so first of all, you can always see this go to YouTube and type in Native Wellness Institute, and you can see all 450 power hours. There's some really good ones. Um, if you really were, today's topic is around healthy sexuality. And we have several that Jean Tagabon and I just finished. Um, and we doing, we're doing it from uh, the Native man's perspective, from the Native woman's perspective, and we're doing it now from the LGBTQ to spirit perspective. And we're just, we're just inviting you to come and do some healing. And so I would um, go to that YouTube. And so let's, um, I mean, like I was just thinking today, why am I dressed like this? Uh, you know, when I, um, I just want to share something, you know, I'm just visiting with you. Or we we won't get into your um, vibrators yet, eh? <laughs> I was I did bring some vibrators, but I'm uh I just um the prude people. I'm gonna go gentle, so you know you don't have to get your vibrators out unless you want to. <laughs> anyway, let's um let's start with um talking about why who is a badass auntie and who's in apprenticeship to be a badass auntie. And um, because on some days, I still feel like I'm an apprentice when I'm sitting with, um, um, when I'd sit with the late May Tallow, I was um, an apprentice. When I sit with um, Natuwa Pisaki, Carol Murray, I feel like I'm an apprentice. Uh, when I sit with my best friend, Cecilia Fire Thunder, there's some aspects of life that I am an apprentice. But when I sit with someone, you know, and, and it's not nothing to do with age, it's due, it's due to how do you become a badass auntie? And I was, I, last night, I had this beautiful dream that and it was around um what belongs to women what belongs to uh grandmothers what belongs to mothers uh what belongs to um all of our sisters our sisterhood and what is outside of their body and inside of their body that is sacred and so you know of course we all know did you know <laughs> that all of the babies in the earth come from a woman's body, <laughs> you know, come from, and I just, you know, I have my Priscilla. Oh, that Priscilla. She always has to wear um, 
something that resembles a vagina. And this is her favorite piece lately because it's it's a papaya, but it has a beaded clitoris. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like, you know, anyway, I'm just going to wear wear her necklace for right now. But I wanted to um, start with um, a couple of stories. And then I really want to start to talk about the healing of healthy sexuality. So the first story that I'd like to begin with um, has to do with a courageous, badass auntie named Shashin Littlefeather. And Shashin um, is just an amazing human being um, that our family and our community in the San Francisco Bay Area and in the Santa Fe area and all over um, Indian country has known um, um, for at least the past 50 years, she's she's really been with us and about us. And so I hope I hope she's t tuning in, uh, Kalina. I hope that um, I just want to tell a story because it has to do with the healing around healthy sexuality and how Native women are perceived. So um, just just to catch you up, um, just in case you don't know who she is, and um, Shashin uh, Littlefeather is um, an icon to most of us in Indian country. Um, and again, you know, I was born in 1956. Um, so in the younger generations, this is some schooling from your badass auntie that you should pay attention to because I think it's going to flip things in our much bigger um actress world and the academy awards and the their museum and just what we see on film and i wanted to start with her story because you know we can go to tazba right now who is just did this incredible um season two episode five um just just seeing her genius so uh, shashin um was a native woman in 1973 who was friends with Marlon Brando and friends with many, many of those in Hollywood. Um, so go back 50 years, 1973. And that was, oh, that was the coolest. That was, uh, man, we had, things started to happen. We had roots, we had the Godfather, but the Godfather, the reason natives and indigenous like the Godfather because dang <laughs> godfather i mean some of his some of his advice and some of you know just like um you know keeping your enemies close <laughs> that has helped and helped most uh, politicians survive in indian country because <laughs> if they don't keep them close boom they ain't there anymore <laughs> anyway that um uh, so uh, Shashin was young, like, you know, 21 years old. And, you know, I was just like, I was thinking, so go back to 21 years old. And she was, she was friends with Marlon Brando and Marlon. And at that time, Marlon Brando was listening to um, not only people of color, but he had listened to some natives and, and they, they were just telling him goofy stories. Like how come in Hollywood, every time you need a real Indian you you get an Italian and you put a wig on him with uh, braids and and even you know have to shave him close because they got these big <laughs> anyway and how come you know you have to to get these non-natives and and you know paint them up and put put some feathers and it was just um that's rude do you know how rude that is <laughs> using a fake ass Indian that's a shit ass. <laughs> We're using a fake ass Indian and putting some braids and a feather. And so anyway, um, Shashin had Marlon Brando wanted to make a statement, which is which is beautiful because one of the things that people that we love that we see on the screen is they become icons and we listen to them. So when you're on the screen, you know, uh, and so Marlon Brando will shorten this. I want to just get the story to you is 
he asked Shashin if she would use, would put on her, her Indian clothes, like how she likes to dress. And at that time, you know, Shashin had a, a buckskin, a buckskin dress, which is, whoa, you know, if you ever want to give the greatest gift, go hunt it, tan it, and give, give the buckskin so she can have a buckskin dress. That's um, courtship. I'm just in, in case you want a, a real Indian woman. <laughs> well, so she, she put on her buckskin. She put on her her beaded hair ties and her moccasins. And so this is 50 years ago. And she walked out on the stage. And of course, she had like eight pages of what Marley he had a real statement. And you can see this all online. But when she got out there, they said, I'm sorry, you only get 60 seconds. And and um, if you if you go over it, we're going to drag you off. We're going to drag you. <laughs> so here she gets on there so you can you can see it. So but she courageously, as most Indian do, what we do is when we're dressed up because I'm dressed in my um, I'm going to go look at some roots and pick um, that I'm going to harvest. So I, I got we always dress up like this because um when you're harvesting roots it's um you're in a relationship with that plant and it's courtship and for some of those roots you have to pray to them you have to sing to them you have to sit with them it isn't just like you know pick it up in aisle 17 in walmart it's and so you have to dress up um like your ancestors because of that relationship. And that has a lot to do, you know, think about the relationship of those that you have sex with or those that you want to have healthier sex with is you really have to look at what is the process by which you all um, get prepared. So Shashin gets up on the stage. Okay. So she's up on the stage and once she, you know, and everybody's like, Ooh, ah, you know, there's an Indian woman. She looks like an Indian woman. She talks like an Indian woman. Oh, she's dressed like an Indian woman. And, you know, maybe in some of the stereotyping, you know, at that time. And once she starts to utter the words that she is there representing Marlon Brando and that she is going to decline his Oscar because for, um, best picture of the in, in the uh, best actor in the godfather because she's declining it because of the way native americans and tribes have been treated <laughs> in film and so immediately so that's immediately there was booing and so so think about that who was who was booing the booing came from europeans patriarchy who believe who just believed that they could uh boo her and get rid of her and um and also at that time and a lot of people don't know that you know even john wayne was waiting and he actually when when she uttered those words that native americans were discriminated against that were stereotyped and that were racially treated badly in film um john wayne tried to you know run just imagine well if john wayne come right here i just pop a cap <laughs> anyway no i don't want to be no i i probably would have popped a cap in john wayne or at least slapped his face um he tried to get out there and physically attack her and take drag her off the stage fortunately you know it's almost like a will smith Chris Rock, you know, when, when that just happened, but um, there was six men that held him back so he couldn't beat Shashin up. Just imagine that that was allowable 50 years ago. So I wanted to start with that story because um, Shashin is um, got an apology from the Academy Award. That's why we're, something's flipping with reservation dogs with dark winds, with Yellowstone, with, um, you know, uh, our, our native actors and actresses and directors and uh, 
assistant directors and all of you know the the names that you see there something's being flipped and that's why um dang reservation dogs i just want to go <laughs> reservation dogs that's what I want to do, that you are so fantastic in bringing the real reservation stories to us so we can heal, we can laugh, and we can celebrate. So, yay. <laughs> so, I, but I want to start with that story because on September 17th, and you're all invited to tune in, um, I think, Red Nations Academy Award at the Academy Awards Museum on September 17th. It's kind of like how the Pope apologized. And I hope you didn't already forget about that. The Academy just apologized to Shashin Littlefeather. And they're going to do a day long event publicly celebrating Indians, <laughs> Native women, Indians in film. And they're um, so with her, she's got to invite all of her best friends that are directing, all of her best friends that are actresses, all of and all of her, you know, like us, like, you know, I'm I'm just um, the badass auntie that's been her friend for five decades. And and Cecilia Fire Thunder, too. Cecilia Fire Thunder is coming and Cecilia is going to bring her uh, her sister Shirley from Saquon. And we get to have some guests. I'm bringing, I'm bringing my life partner, and I'm bringing um, Aurora Mamea. We get to because I guess it's like one of those things where you have to be on the list. Isn't that interesting? Not Schindler's List, <laughs> but you have to be kind of on the Schindler's List of Hollywood. <laughs> anyway, we get to be there when they publicly apologize to Shashin Littlefeather. So that was um, the uh, the first story. The second story, and, um, you know, I had a dream last night, like I said, about the sacred things of women, because because women, you know, depending on Indian country, their sacred things besides their body, which is sacred, besides their breasts, which are sacred, and besides their vagina, which is sacred, besides their uterus, which is sacred, besides their fallopian tubes and so on and on all that sacredness that life-giving is um women also in the dream have things that that help them pray and bring healthy sexuality um it you know sometimes i was just thinking about all of the umbilical cords that are put in beaded you know um turtles beaded lizards uh, because of that umbilical cord that's attached to that baby when you have when you have sex and you make a baby <laughs> this this umbilical cord is the attachment to that life giver that sustains you so i was just um a smudging smudging um my daughter's umbilical cord because i was um uh matumspi and i was think and i was thinking i was uh in the dream, it was some women have rattles, some women have pipes, some women have bundles of many, many things. Like it, there's, they're uh, they're the keeper of that lodge, that teepee. They're the keeper of that bond bundle, is the and and sometimes, and um it, in the colonization, if they have people around them that don't celebrate that same sacredness. Um, they might want them to put those sacred things away and never, never take them out. Just keep them in the closet. You know, like a Kami Boisman, it's a stand-up headdress. Just, you know, don't, don't wear it. You know, you think that the, anyway, it's because it's medicine is to help uplift the people and to make them thrive and to, to, to be together and to be uh, have abundance and to have long healthy lives. That's its medicine. So, um, so I wanted to just you know talk about um, the smudge your sacred things. So, <laughs> I, one of uh, the comments that I'm getting having you know played um, the character of Priscilla in Reservation Dogs is I've been getting these comments, and so I kind of want to. Uh, go go into the healthy sexuality part of it is um 
I've been getting comments from so many um, men and women and LGBTQ two spirit, um, and they said that they want um, they want my medicine in that little bag. <laughs> Like like Gail Zapata, Gail. I mean, you know, I could just these are these are the badass aunties that been around for a long time. She said, "Um, yeah, we could just you should just have little bags of that, and then we could either put them in a little a uh, little crock pot, and we could just smudge everybody's vagina." <laughs> I mean, before they go out snagging, and then I I told her I said, "Well." We could, there's all kinds of things you could smudge before you go out snagging, and um, so that so then I I kind of have a um, there's a little surprise I I um was at um, our reservation we have the Heart Butte Indian Days we have um there's a parade at eleven on Saturday there's grand entry at two there's dancing you know sometimes thursday friday saturday night and then we have a, a ganax them a dog brave dog versus veteran warriors a stick game it, just thousands of dollars bed but it's not about the dollars it's a, a long story long time ago because our uh, our people like to play stick game not not for money but for um winning a point of view <laughs> so anyway they have that on sunday but i was just looking at the blackfeet tribe tribal health improvement program t-hip and uh, all my little nieces uh work there uh a past a bridge a bridge to health care but they they threw out these snag bags and uh and, and it was there was a lot of humor because they were just throwing them out and they threw what they threw it to my mother Woo, she caught it <laughs> and she i go what is it mom what is she goes oh it's a snag bag so i thought okay so i haven't looked inside so we're, we're just gonna um we're on the native wellness power hour and we're talking about healthy snagging so i'm actually it hasn't been opened but we were just laughing because mom uh, mom said what if it's just condoms and i go well mom they they don't want you to get pregnant <laughs> so they don't want her to get pregnant but anyway i'm opening up the snag bag and shoot sure enough oh well there's some fresh fresh wipes yeah because these are good to have all the time like you might want to just get cleanliness before before the goodness starts there's um lip report repair uh oh that's kind of with um with sunscreen 35 there is um <laughs> classic select condom ooh, there's one um it says text later <laughs> isn't that awesome this is in the snag bag okay and um there's um some chewing gum for before and after <laughs> this is cool these are good snag bags there's um oh how cool is that this is um dang this is the good lubrication <laughs> wow this is the good lubrication and this is, you know, sometimes, and just remember, always have safe lubrication because sometimes you, it, um, you know, and I think about this because one of, one of my, um, my sisters sent me, she said, these are the six, six things that dry up women. And it was some six pictures of some ugly old white men, <laughs> but here, here, here's the magic in healthy sexuality, you don't know what parts you're going to fondle. You don't know what parts you're going to kiss. You don't know what parts that just need lubrication so that it intensifies the making love experience. So this has lubrication. Sheesh. Okay. So one, two, three. So it's got, it's got enough for three, three um, snag. And, you know, in case you're, in case your partner has a penis, you might, um, you might have a partner that you both have vaginas. Oh, four. Woohoo. But in case they, oh my God, they gave you more lubrication, more 
whoa i'm just like digging it you know what if it was a whole bag of lubrication more gum you know so that you have a good smelling breath more uh wipes you know cleaning around especially cleaning way under that scrotum around that scrotum are in the shaft all those parts this is uh the wipes and let's see i drop and then of course what's good is um there's um a lot of there's literature on practicing practicing abstinence uh what having few partner partners getting vaccinated anyway <laughs> for those of you who um just have one partner and those of you who have several partners more power to you and so i i just wanted to so that is a black feet snag bag and i just thought you know i would i would uh open that up uh while we're on the power hour and then uh kind of move us into um then the next half hour i i had um when i was doing um the power hour with gene tagabon we were doing healthy sexuality and so i'll just remind you of a couple of questions we asked because some of you got them wrong <laughs> So I'm just going to do this quickly because we asked you is um, can orgasms relieve pain? Was that true or false? And um, some just didn't know if it was true or false. But I, I just want to say, you know, the, the chemical um, oxytocin, oxytocin, which is um, a pain, natural pain reliever. So if you're in pain, go have sex, eh? <laughs> <laughs> just think if the whole because everybody says oh man i got a headache oh man i got a sore throat oh i got sinuses oh my shoulder hurts oh my back hurts go have sex go have healthy sex <laughs> because orgasms relieve pain they um relax they're positive and they're emotionally um satisfying you feel very satisfied um, the other question, and some of you also got this one wrong, was the G spot is a mythical spot on a, a female that is said to increase sexual pleasure. <laughs> and that's like a true or false. So like people were like, where's the G spot? And so just FYI, the G spot on women is um is about three inches in the vagina. And um, thank you, Mariah. She's um, she's just given me they they oh man, they grow everything here. They have a large garden, and she's given me some cucumbers. Now this is a cucumber, but what does it look like? What <laughs> what does this cucumber look like? So the G spot is is about two or three inches inside the vagina, and so that that the G spot that needs stimulating for most women to have an orgasm um <laughs> anyway this you know it's 2022 we got to be able to have this dialogue and but if for some reason this is making you uncomfortable if it's making you feel uncomfortable you got some healing to do because and I, and I you know i don't want to i'm flipping the the coin if this makes you feel uncomfortable say what would you um on english words are so um if you're a prude or if you um just like you don't like badass auntie just talking the truth or you don't like um cucumber now who doesn't like a cucumber <laughs> you know i mean i just i just I was uh, that um, we invite you to come to Native Wellness Institute's training. We do some on Zoom and we also do some in person. Just invite us. Um, we have um, the healthy uh, relationship curriculum, which is best practices. We have the gathering of Native Americans, which is um, also best practices. We also have several wellness in the workplace. Um, 
that's another, we're going to have a whole power on, on uh, healthy sexuality in the workplace. I won't do that today, but I was just, uh, just thinking about that. Um, so um, invite us, Native Wellness Institute. We have a whole team who can come in and do retreats and, and talk about healthy sexuality. I just wanted to go over those few um, questions that some people got wrong last time. Uh, the other one was the percentage of women who admit to the same sex sexual um, contact is 11 to 12 percent. Now, remember, that was controversial when we were talking about it. It's um, it's actually much higher. And um, so and, and for for men, woo, 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 you know, it's it's a higher percentage. So then just think about that. Why are we so judgmental about same sex, same gender sexuality? And so I invite you, you know, we, we've done this, we put this, I really invite you another resource is to, um, to get this, the next level ally to how to support your queer transgender friends. Um, I just, um, I sat um, and listened and they brought me in as an elder um, at a two spirit gathering. It was so celebratory. It was so healing. And I just learned so much and I'm still processing one of one of the best uh, panels they had was uh, a transgender uh, story in which they had uh, transgender um, native people who wanted to get up and tell their story. And I just want to say this is this is one of um, a remarkable workshop because the the young people leading it had wanted us. We were um, we were on Flathead Lake and they wanted us to be submerged in water. And they were standing on the shore and the panel was speaking because when you're submerged in water you hear better. And I just want to say, I want to, I want all of our workshops to happen where we're in water and we're talk, a talking circle because the water is healing. The water is blessing. And we were able to hear their stories. We were able to um, cry with their stories. We were able to hear them. And without judgment, it was just incredible. And so I just, I just want to share, share that with you. So the um, the the part that I wanted to begin, you know, because sheesh, we only we only get we only get an hour, but that's okay because there's there's twenty four hours in each day, one day at a time. <laughs> Is I wanted to um, I'm gonna put a pause on the um. Well, let's just do one more. <laughs> in women, the age at which masturbation occurs most often is twenty to twenty four years old. And so that whole, let's just talk about masturbation and healthy sexuality. And I wanted to, to start there because there's been um, so much healing. There's been so much recommendation. And this is just your badass auntie talking to you. Masturbation is normal. Masturbation is fun. Masturbation is a, a wonderful uh, masturbating each other is good stuff. <laughs> it's like, get your technique down. Get to, I mean, like, it, anyway, that is something to be um, cherished. Something to be, um, oh, just um, good with. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, you know, I'm not going to. The, the female sexuality quiz and the male sexuality quiz and the female one was designed by myself and um, John Cocker. So a, a two spirit. So it's kind of like a, um, a multi gender <laughs> is available in native wellness is um, healthy relationship curriculum. Are we, we can send it to you, but I wanted to, you know, one of the other, the parts, um, you know, uh, that Jean Tagabon have, I've started I wanted to just make comment. We have, you know, we have these. Um, this actually is a, a packet that we use for um, Indian residential schools in Canada. And this is the one that Kainai Wellness Center started before the pandemic um, and all the reserves. And, you know, one of the things when when you're in Canada, 
there's different names in so First Nations, Treaty 7, Treaty 6, Indigenous, Aboriginal, Off-Reservation, Status Indians, First People on Reserve, Blackfoot Confederacy. But um, in this packet, thank you. Oh, thank you, Mariah. Woo, that's, oh, wow. Check that out. What is it? Oh, my God. Elderberry Mint. Mariah Gladstone and Kenneth, you just got it going on. These are my little niece and nephew over here. Mm. Mm. You should make this when you're having healthy sex. Woohoo, because it's mm, tantalizing for the taste buds. But I wanted to um uh and, and there's a there's a handout in here, and we put it on um the native wellness um Facebook site and we'll We'll kind of put this up there, but I want to just for today, there's on this side is um, sexual abuse mindset. And then on this side is the healthy sexuality attitudes. And so I'm just going to um, talk the positive stuff. And so this is your badass auntie. And, and I'm just, you know, I'm just think I'm visiting with you. Um, and so let's start with the first one. It says, sex is a controllable energy as opposed to uncontrollable energy. And so by, by that, that means that that human being, that the sex is only as healthy as that human being. And that the sex is something that is cherished, nurtured, and that it, it's a choice sex is a choice so then in healthy sexuality think about um how uh romantically you can be with yourself and how romantically you can be with your partner when you're when you're going to have um, love making and um so and and you know I, I think about um I always I have a a, a niece she's a, when she was a teenager she was about twelve years old and she's a woman now and she's had uh, three kids and but I remember her um, coming to me and she said she said Andy you know what there's this teenage cosmopolitan uh, magazine and. I just love it because uh, I, it says that when you have sex for the first time, that you should have really got not beautiful sheets on the bed. You should have candles that you should have um, really soft music, flute music that you should that it should be. Um, this is like the atmosphere in which you should lose your virginity. And she described it and and uh you know and she's 12 and you know she's black feet we we have our our black feet accent <laughs> and then she said auntie i really want it for me cuz she's a virgin she want, she said i want it to be like that and i go and and i listen to her and, and then she goes oh heck it all all the girls I just been listening to them and it's just like drink some budweiser and boom <laughs> That's how they lose their virginity. And then they just go to sleep afterwards. Oh, shoot. That is horrible. Anyway, um, yeah, I just I'm that I'm thinking of that story because um, the badass auntie, sometimes we just listen when you're a teenager and we would like to we're just not like we're going to pull out this handout, but we're going to start to say to you, you know, you're you're sacred. When that ceremony, and it is a ceremony, every time you have sex with same sex, your husband, your wife, or your partner, think of it as a sacred ceremony. Think of it as something so special that is bad to be gave to us. That it's so special because that's when you can create life. And if you, you know, if if because it's a choice. If you don't want to create life, then you better get the snag bag. <laughs> and you better better have these or other 
options. Because when that ceremony, when you're with another person, is love making. And it, it should be, you know, like most ceremonies, some ceremonies can be four hours, some can be an hour, not not 60 seconds. <laughs> so 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 think about the preciousness of your being and how you want how, how your next um having sex is special that it is a ceremony. Okay, so I just wanna we're only done two. <laughs> And that's okay because, uh, man, when I cry like that, you know, your tears have different compositions, like uh, when you're crying for grief or when you're crying. And I think I'm crying for happy because I'm just really happy. Oh, man, I'm just like joyful. Number one, that, you know, I was chosen, you know, and chosen to be on reservation dogs because, I, they, from what I understood, they auditioned a lot of people, but they had been watching, um, someone has been watching Native Wellness Institute's Power Hour, and they watched the one on critical race theory. And then they watched some other Power Hours that I had done, and then that's when they gave me the strong invitation to to audition. And then, you know, I just want to um, just, just pause. We're going to get down this healthy sexuality list. I want to give a shout out to Lily Gladstone, who is also Blackfeet, because Lily was, um, you know, once we decided, um, and I, I said, I said prayers because my intention is, um, my intention was not to become an actress. My intention was to elevate what we're talking about today. Uh, the topic of healthy sexuality and the, was the reason I accepted the position of Priscilla badass Priscilla and 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 we're just starting that conversation today in this power hour is because I wanted to uh, elevate it so that not only uh, starting with native women that this becomes um, a talking circle it becomes the dialogue at the kitchen table. It becomes the topic when you're making a really good healthy dinner. Um, and on healthy dinner, I was just thinking about that fry bread stuff because that's a tough one. Because all my relatives that ate a whole bunch of fry bread like that, they're all diabetic now. And I, I just, I just, um, anyway, I was just thinking. Was that a colonizer's strategy was to have us eat fry bread and give us commodities all the time? Give us a stuff, give us sugar, white sugar, white bread. Um, Harold Belmont used to say that there's three white evils, white bread, white sugar, and white women. <laughs> but that was Harold Belmont. <laughs> he also used to say, Harold Belmont, he used to say, ooh, a good Indian woman has buff flow hips and antelope legs <laughs> so i think about that and so i wanted to um okay so let's get back to healthy sexuality and a positive nature and um uh the next is um sex is a natural drive and i want to um to speak to that as a, as opposed to it being an addictive drive so, uh, and I was just, you know, I, I was thinking about when you were growing up, how did your parents, and this is about healthy sexual, how did your parents or your aunts and uncles or your grandma and grandpa explain how we make a baby? And, and healthy sexuality begins when when you start to tell the stories i mean because like a lot of times uh, i remember one time going to the zoo and we were all little and w there was two bears making love and my my father who had went to boarding school had um in a boarding school they were taught sex is dirty you don't talk about it it's secretive and and my dad um er, you know and everybody's like Woohoo! Check out the bears. Woohoo! The bears are having sex. You know, woohoo! Anyway, everyone's looking like, and my dad just like pushed us to the side and said, Close your eyes. Don't be looking at. 
and then, but then he made us go over here so we couldn't watch and then he went back and watched <laughs> i just love my dad <laughs> anyway that um uh that sex is a natural drive so so think about um healthy sexuality happens when you have two healthy people that perceive sex as as something enjoyable it's a good energy it's a choice and it's nurturing and it's healing that sex is an expression of love and so so just think of that um sometimes uh, you, you know when um you're in love with someone or you see someone and you know i think about sometimes though because uh, i always ask couples so this is if, if, if you're already a couple you should tell your story of when you first met because uh, in in healing around healthy sexuality in you know couples come in for counseling and communication and so i always say tell me the story about how how it was when you first met and it's so revealing and you know that um that natural drive because that natural chemistry and you think about it it's a natural energy talking about natural energy oh my god mariah oh the elderberry now look at that her ice cube mm -mm -mm. oh this makes you this is some sexy tea <laughs> it's my life partner <laughs> just kidding mm. so that um that natural drive when you're in love again going back to that ceremony every time you are in bed together or um other places like like some of you might want well, you might have a, a fantasy um play out the fantasies with your partner if you're in a committed relationship and you have a vow to each other that is uh, and sex is private um but not secretive is that part it's a ceremony and it's a natural drive and uh, you know because i i think about just loves loves of the past and i think about couples counseling and because uh, uh, sometimes I'll ask, I'll say, well, what, uh, yeah, what, what was a risky place that you made love to your, this person that you're just deeply in love with? And all kinds of things come out, like in the bathroom on the airplane. <laughs> and then I just think, those must be some skinny Indians. <laughs> I just can't see some of my big relatives. Number one, two of them fitting in the bathroom <laughs> on the plane. <laughs> but anyway, I just remember one couple just saying that one time it was just they and they're they're committed. When you're in a committed, vowed relationship, you can do anything you want as long as it's safe and as long as there's consensual choice. That is what your badass auntie is telling you right now. So, but I was just uh, so then after that. After that counseling session, the next plane I got on and I was looking in there, I was just saying, "Woo, they must have been some skinny Indians. Uh, they must have been on keto. <laughs> anyway, how did they do it? Anyway, I was just thinking about. So, OK, as, as, as you can see, Auntie, and just, you know, I was just admiring this cucumber again. Ooh, 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 ooh. Anyway, um, this uh, this positive, healthy sexual attitude mindset sex is sharing with someone sex is part of who i am and so i wanted to just because of that last question around masturbation one of the healthy things that you can do um in between uh, practicing relationships is not just settle for someone don't settle don't settle settle you know because you're horny don't settle and so in, in the in-between um masturbate and sex is part of who i am you know and i i just remember native wellness institute in the 80s and the 90s and i was just remembering um 2010 we had a large gathering in san diego and and uh cecilia, cecilia fire thunder and i had um vibrators as door prizes <laughs> and it was to encourage women to find to explore themselves 
to find out their erogenous zones, to find out what makes them have an orgasm and to do it with a vibrator and not, you know, all of those uncles. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, just just to try and to to figure out um, your healthy body sexuality and what you like, and so masturbation, and so get some toys. You know, I have some toys down here, but I didn't want to um, upset anyone who um, um, is afraid to look at phallic, eh? So next time. So sex it requires communication. And so one of the things that this badass auntie would like to um, ask you and invite you to do is to have comfortable sex talk before, before you even start kissing. It's like the foreplay before the foreplay. And so it, it's very, it's, um, it's very natural to ask your partner is to tell them, whew, I am really liking and falling in love with you. And I really want it to be good for both of us. I really want to communicate with you because I don't want to do anything that doesn't feel good for you, doesn't feel safe for you, or I really want to know what gets you excited. <laughs> I really and so that kind of communication so think about that kind of communication and it maybe it's not in person I was just thinking about woohoo during the pandemic during the pandemic um zoom sex hey facetime sex ooh, uh just getting on the phone and um talking lovely to each other to get each other in the mood of masturbation oh that's some good stuff <laughs> Anyway, uh, woo, 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 gotta woo, woo, woo. <laughs> I love this because you know what? It's exciting times. Native Wellness Institute Power Hour. We're just starting the dialogue on healthy sexuality. So I just want to uh, read a few more and tell a couple more stories as we're kind of winding down to the Power Hour. Um, sex is private. We've talked about that. Not secretive. So it, it is so, you know, it's so, you know, I'm, I'm on here because we have to be able to find our voice around this. We have to be able to communicate. We have to have expressions of love in a good way. And um, I, I was thinking about a sister that I seen recently and she had shared that she had gone through, you know, losing a partner and she would lost a child and, um, and she was just, um, she was asking herself that she'd like to at least go out on a date. And her and I had this very frank conversation because she, she, she was older and she said, you know, all these um, younger men, like 20 years younger than me are asking are flirting with me. And I just go Hoo -hoo! <laughs> flirting with you flirt. Flirting is good. And you have to learn how to flirt, you know? And so, and then I, I said, I, I'm going to check on you. So we're, we're going to stay in communication. I said, flirt back. Flirt back and just practice. Let them flirt. Flirt back. And that's, uh, you know, that's if you're single, eh? That's if you're not in a committed rule. Well, you know, that's a weird. We'd have to have a, is flirting. What if you're in a committed relationship and you're out there flirting around? Uh oh, you can get in trouble. <laughs> So anyway, so I was talking with her and, and she started smiling and she started laughing. And I, I said, uh, I think I said, I said, the Rosebud Fair is going on. Just go and practice three days of flirting with no action unless you really have to. And just flirting. And she was laughing. She was going, <laughs> she was like, oh, my God, because I was giving her permission to practice because I said, you know, when we lose our loved one or we lose our husband or wife or we lose our partner or we lose a child we're not dead and it's okay to come back alive and to flirt it's okay to come back alive and go out on a date 
but I was also telling her, I said, but you, you heard the, um, for us older ladies, we have a rule. And she said, well, what is that rule? I said, you know, it's um, nurse purse um, hearse. And she goes, I never heard that rule. What is that word? Well, when you get older, you kind of want to uh, choose a partner. If you're going to have really good, healthy sex that, um, you know, you're not a nurse to them, you know, that, you know, maybe they can't even get it up anymore. I mean, you can still make love if they can't have an erection. You don't want to be the nurse taking care of them. And you don't want them being with you because of your purse, because you have money. Nurse, purse, and then hearse. You don't want to be driving the goddamn hearse because they're dead. <laughs> so, so it's okay to date someone 20 years younger. Anyway, I'm telling you that joke because she just started laughing, laughing. Anyway, I'm going to check on her in a couple of weeks and see how she's flirting. And I'm going to put this on pause and I'm going to um, ask you to uh, continue to um, tune in to the Native Wellness Institute's Power Hour. We go for an hour and what we do is we bring, we bring programming that's positive, productive, and proactive. And that brings goodness to you. And, you know, shoot, it's Labor Day weekend, all kinds of powwows, all kinds of good memorials, all kinds of, it's the last of the summer. So this is your badass auntie giving you permission to make a plan to have some healthy sex over this weekend. So with that, um, we're going to, we're going to close out uh, Nistu, um, Mokoyo Sukoi, Theta Newbreast, and I'm going to visit with my relatives here, uh, laugh a little, because I probably said something. I hope I said something that would um, make you think, make you feel, and make you change your behavior. Um, oh, I also am, you know, and I just, I want to thank um, Sterling. I want to thank Tazba for giving me an opportunity um, to be seen and uh, who knows we'll see what happens in the future so with that we're going to close out thank you shannon we'll close out and kitaki to matsuno we'll see you next week <laughs>